Hello, welcome to the IMAS updates for quarter one, 2021. This short video is to give you an overview of the latest updates for IMAS Enterprise or otherwise known as 20-300. So it's relevant to anyone working in version 20.3.90. Firstly, with this version of IMAS, we have some new features. That includes the IMAS report writer, event panels, a new RISE website theme, Pay Central for accounting and finance, and a new data integrity dashboard. We'll cover each of these in a little more detail throughout this video. Here are some additional key changes or updates to IMAS Enterprise. For public users, there's now an option to be able to make partial payments through the website. We have an out of the box website theme, account or sign out changes. The website cookie policy and cookie options have been updated. And CSC and postcode details for credit cards are only used for public payment methods on the card checkout. It's no longer required for staff users. For staff, we have some security updates I'll take you through shortly. We have a new Pay Central dashboard and the ability to view submitted payments in real time. We have some membership and billing term dates that can be overwritten. Some settings for auto pay has been updated and we have some IQA performance updates as well as event virtual meetings links. Some of the key settings updates include information about licensing. When you now go to your About IMAS page, the page user interface looks very different. It gives you more information about your licensing and your licensed products and how many licensed users you have. Secondly, in our settings, the navigation item for general lookup tables has now moved as well. It is sitting in its own navigation item, whereas previously it used to be under utilities. Let's go and have a look at those. One of the first things you may have noticed with the IMAS update to 20.3.90 is that the login interface has also changed. I'm going to sign in as Brian Murphy, and I'm going to go to settings and the about IMAS page. This time, instead of seeing a bunch of numbers where your IMAS version used to be, it is now telling us the product as well as the IMAS version by numbers. This is important so you know which version of IMAS you're working in and can notify tech support team at ASI to let them know which version of IMAS you're working on. We can see license information, including when the license expires, how many staff users have versus how many we are licensed for and how many contacts we have in the database. At the bottom, we can also see additional licensed features. These are modules or features you can purchase on top of this standard IMAS database. The Purge System Cache button is still sitting in here, and there is also a Resync link. Anytime you purchase an additional license or an additional license feature, what you'll need to do is come in here and select the Resync link to resync your system and have it updated. So then you can see the new licensed feature or additional licenses. So that is one of the key areas that has been updated in IMAS 20.3.90. The other one was under settings. We can see right at the bottom, general lookup tables. So we no longer have to go to utilities to find the general lookup tables. Security. Some of the security updates include staff user account security changes, information about password requirements, and multi-factor authentication. The update around staff user account security means that two people that are logging in with the same user account are unable to. It's not relevant if you're logging in on the same browser or the same window. It's only if you're in a new in private window or a different browser or a different laptop, desktop, or phone, for example. Password requirements have changed as well. Previously, the system would sign out system administrators after 15 minutes of inactivity. Now, the password expiration and password requirements are relevant for all staff users. Let's have a look at that under authentication in our contact settings. So I'm going to go to settings, contacts, authentication. And here I see some options now. Password expiration, so we can enforce password expiration for staff users or public users. Password reuse for staff or public. And session timeout for staff or public, but it's no longer a requirement. Multi-factor authentication was also relevant to only system administrators, but now it is made available for all staff users. 
They're the key updates to security for 20.3.90. With websites and Rise, we have a new out of the box theme. It's called Mocha, and it's the first in our series of coffee themed website designs that are coming. The cookie policy has also been updated, so you may need to update or make changes to that cookie policy, and I'll show you where to do that. And content must be secure. IMIS will no longer support a HTTP web pages, only HTTPS. You may need to update your SSL certificate to support that. Let's have a look firstly at our new website theme, the Mocha theme. So our out of the box member responsive website is using the Mocha theme. This one has a different look and feel to our previous out of the box website themes. We have a large banner across the top with some curved lines or waves going across the page. And scrolling down, we have some action buttons and action information, again, with that curving look and feel. The other thing that is different is when you do sign in, now at the top of the page where the sign out link or the account was previously, it is now a drop down to link to my account or to sign out. So that mocker theme is available under Rise, Site Builder, Manage Websites. On the Look and Feel tab, select the website themes and we can see that in here. The cookie policy has been updated. So IMAS can be configured to display a cookie warning message to users that allow them to accept or reject non-essential cookies. In the same warning message, you can also add a cookie policy document. To do that, on your website look and feel tab under Manage Websites, you can select Show a Cookie Warning. There is a cookie warning message you can edit, learn more link, a content or URL to link to. In this case, we haven't selected any, so we could select a relevant content page, accept the cookies, reject the cookies, and the where that warning location will display. The content by default sits under Rise, Page Builder, Manage Content. If you go to the Quick Start Sites folder, under Shared, there's an out of the box cookie policy page. So you would need to make a copy of that cookie policy or update your own, create your own, and apply that cookie policy to your website. There is more information on help.imus.com on how to do that. So it's a little bit of an update on websites and Rise. Now, of course, we have our new feature called IMAS Report Writer. IMAS Report Writer is a powerful tool that enables you to easily create reports and dashboards that are then directly embedded in IMAS. IMAS Report Writer is a licensed feature where you can choose from a basic or plus license. Report Writer Basic includes access to your existing data sources, a click and drag feature, and some basic formatting. Report Writer Plus comes with some advanced reports, the ability to create dashboards using those reports, and chained reports. Now we do have an essentials and a mastering IMAS Report Writer course in the ASI Learning Hub that takes you through these elements in more detail. If you are licensed for IMAS Report Writer, you can go to Continuum, and you'll see it at the bottom of your existing reports. You can easily create a new report using Express Views and using existing data, such as contact information, using those data sources that you have in your IMAS database. There are some formatting options on the right hand side of the page. And once you've added your fields and your formatting, you can easily see the data results by clicking on Live Data. You can save your reports and you can show visualization, turn your reports into a chart. Other updates we have is relating to finance. We now have IMAS Pay Central to act as our accounting and finance system. Some things included with Pay Central is a new Pay Central dashboard. It includes measurements relating to payments. We have Pay Central settings under finance settings where you set up your gateways, payment methods, and payment method sets. Submitted payments, so you can view your submitted payments in real time using Pay Central. And third party gateways are no longer supported in the US or in Canada. We'll go into Settings, Finance, Pay Central. Previously, under the Finance settings, you would have had a separate 
section for payment gateways, payment methods, payment method sets, and automatic payments. Now they're all located under the Pay Central menu. And we can see the various tabs at the top. These are your payment settings using Pay Central. Under Finance, you'll now see a menu item labeled Pay Central. Select it and you can go straight to your Pay Central dashboard. This has some information around payments received through Pay Central for the last seven days, by payment method, auto pay if you use automatic payments, and year to date. You can click on Find Payments. So previously in Finance, this would have been its own menu item or Payments and then Find Payments. You can find the most recent payments. If you are licensed for auto pay, you may see automatic payment transactions in real time as well. And you have Pay Central Live. Pay Central Live allows you to see those transactions and payments that have been made. You have filter options at the top that you can work with as well. Some other finance settings that have been updated. There are two new settings in here for you to work with. One being allowing non-staff users to enter partial payments, which means your public users could go onto your website and make partial payments for their membership events or products if you select this option. Also, if you are going to credit invoices, you can choose a refund method through the original payment method or by issuing a check. You can choose your default refund method for crediting invoices. That means when you go to finance, closing procedures, credit invoices, you're recording them as a refund. You can record them against the original payment method or the payment method you've selected in those settings there. What do we have around membership and billing? One of the things we can now do is adjust term dates in the middle of a term. So if you want to adjust someone's begin date, their starting date for their membership or their pay through date, their cancellation date on a particular billing line item, you can do that at any time and not have to wait for time of renewal. Let's go and find a contact record. So if I'm going to Alex Morgan's account page, I'll go to his membership tab and I can see the list of membership fees by line item at the top. These are all links to open up that fee information. So let's say Alex decided he no longer wanted the journal. We could click on that link and update and override those dates around his journal subscription, his begin date, his pay through date, or a cancellation date. You can add an adjustment reason as well. Just note, if we do change the pay through date, it won't override the overall pay through date of the membership. It's just for that particular line item. So that is one of the big changes to membership and billing. If you are licensed for automatic payments or auto pay feature, one of the other changes you have is that you no longer need to set a cruel accounting method or have a separate accounting method for your auto pay billing cycles. And confirmation emails can also be sent at the start of the auto pay billing term. This information is included in the Essentials of IMAS Auto Pay membership course through the ASI Learning Hub. Data management. We have a new data integrity dashboard. It's a dashboard that you can use to make sure your data is accurate, up to date and consistent. That's found under community, data integrity. So there's some Information to start with, and of course, if you've done your dashboards training, you can change the queries and the progress trackers that are displaying here. We have missing mobile phone numbers. How many individuals are missing the phone number? Email address. How many new contacts do we have? Updated contacts. What about contacts that are missing information? Mobile phone, primary email, organizations missing an email names that have non-alpha characters in their name that shouldn't? Do we have issues with some address information, missing details? Individuals that are not linked to a company ID or those that are locked out of the system. Some IQA and panel updates. In our IQA queries, there is a new property that sets the query to timeout after 30 seconds by default. And this is to help with the performance of your queries. IQAs now also require multiple data sources to have a relationship. Previously, they were not required and the system would automatically then create what's called a cross-join. 
However, cross joints do cause some performance issues, so it's best not to have cross joints, therefore you must create that relationship. And in panels, we can also now configure a file upload property to display as an image rather than a link to download the image. Let's review those updates. On the filters tab, we need to change our display to advanced mode to see the, the new option to allow the query to run for a maximum set time. We can see that on our filters tab and there it is, allow query to run for a maximum 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute or three minutes. It is recommended to stay with 30 seconds or less. If you choose one minute or three minutes, it could affect the performance of your queries. The other item we had was available through our panels. Under Rise, Panel Designer, when we have a panel definition or a new panel, when we select the property type of File Upload, we can define the file types we will allow. When we add that property into our panel, we get a new option here, Display as Image. So rather than a link to download the image, we're going to display the image. And lastly, we have a couple of event updates. The first one being our virtual events. It is more and more common these days to run virtual events. Therefore, we've now got an ability to add a URL or a link to either a virtual Zoom or Teams event. It will also then display the Join Now button on the event website page 30 minutes prior to the event and during the event as well. To add that URL or link, you go into your event and there's a new field in here called Virtual Meeting URL. So you'll pop in the link to your Zoom or Teams event in here. We also have event panels available now, which means you could create a panel to display additional information about your event. If you have a list of information that you want to display or a table of information that's not available through the event details already there, like resources or sponsors or venue information, you can now create an event panel and add your panel to your event display page. And that's done through Rise, Panel Designer, I'll add a panel, the panel type will be event, and I can create my own event panel source with predefined values, multi-selections, user table, a query, or an explicit list. Then as we do with all of our panels onto contact pages, we can just go and add that panel using panel editor onto our event display page. If you want to know more about this, I highly recommend you take the Essentials of IMS Panel Designer course in the ASI Learning Hub. Finally, I'd like to point you to the help.imus.com site for IMS Enterprise. If you go to new features and upgrade changes for either a new user or existing user, you can access all of this information and each new feature from here with further details for each one. Thank you. I hope this has helped you understand more about new features and updates in IMAS version 20.3.90. Thank you.